Welcome into Rogue Football. I'm your host, Jordan DeLugo. Thanks so much for tuning in today. Right now, we have got our Seattle Seahawks 2024 seven-round mock draft. Not going to have the same graphics and production quality that we normally have here. Obviously, I'm on vacation here. Really appreciate y'all tuning in, though, and I wanted to get this Seattle Seahawks seven-round mock draft out for y'all. This is a new-look coaching staff, right? Mike McDonald comes in, taking over for a legend, a living legend, and Pete Carroll, obviously. But Mike McDonald, I think it's a fantastic hire, a guy who very smart, up-and-coming coach, his first head coaching gig in the NFL, right? A guy that has done tremendous things, both at, at Michigan and, and Baltimore. So I think that this is this is a great, great hire for them. And then he brings in Ryan Grubb from uh, Washington, Washington Huskies, new look offense. But I, I think that their offense that they had at Was Washington, it's going to need to evolve in the NFL, right? Like it's not going to be a direct one-to-one. -one. They're going to evolve the offense. But having a guy who's worked with Michael Penix come in to work with Geno Smith makes so much sense to me, right? I think that there's similar skill sets. You have the ability to push the football down the field in a vertical strike offense. I think that that's gonna work out in a good way for them. Um, Geno Smith just launching the ball down the field to Tyler Lockett, to DK Metcalf, you know, Jackson Smith and Jigba working the middle of the field for them. I really like that. A lot to work with, in my opinion, uh, on the defensive side of the ball too for Mike McDonald. I love the linebacker additions, you know, Baker and Dodson coming over from Miami and Buffalo respectively. They're right at the cap. They have about 2 million in cap space available, so I don't expect them to be like a super um, active team at this point in like the second and third waves of free agency. The needs for me right now when I look at this roster, interior offensive line, I think you could definitely address. Not a lot of true needs beyond that for the 2024 season. I think maybe you could look into your future at linebacker, get some young guys. Obviously, Jerome Baker and, and Dotson, they're good players, but I, I think they're on one-year deals, so I'm not sure the long-term plan there. Uh, we'll see how it plays out, but I definitely think you could address the future at linebacker. I think you need another safety, quite frankly. Uh, I'm a Jaguars guy, so I know a lot about Rayshon Jenkins. I think that he can be... Uh, a playmaker for you on the back end. I think that he probably fits well in a Mike McDonald defense. He'll be weaponized a good bit, but I don't think he brings this, the level of consistency that you would really like to see at the safety position for a starting safety. Um, obviously, they have other options as well. He's not going to be the only guy getting snaps out there, but I think you could go, go in that direction as well. Uh, looking at this draft, they have seven draft picks, starting with 16 overall, uh, but no second rounder. So I'm very, very interested in trading back. I like to have these day two picks um, and I like to be able to find value on day two of the draft. I think that's one of the um, best best times to have as many draft picks as you can is on day two. Uh, obviously, day one, very important as well. And on day one here, I have the Seahawks trading down with the Green Bay Packers, giving up 16 and 102 overall for 25 and 58. I think that's good value there. You're basically uh, moving down nine spots in the first round. You're acquiring a second round pick. You're giving up one of your fourth round picks. You had two fourth round picks. So now you're not out of the fourth round either. So I really like that trade now. And I think it makes sense for both teams. The Packers have extra draft capital heading into this 2024 NFL draft. They have a bunch of picks. So I think that that could make sense. At 25 overall, Defensive lineman Johnny Newton, right? I think that I've mocked this this player to a lot of teams because he's one of my favorite players in the draft. I think, even though he doesn't have the longest arms, even though he's not the biggest interior defensive lineman, that he is a blue chip prospect in this class. I think when you look at the contract of Draymond Jones, he could be a cap cut after 2024. You know, they'd save $16 million in cap space by moving on. So now you have Johnny Newton, um, to come in and be your long-term star at, at, at interior defensive line. And I think he can move around the defensive front. Mike McDonald is the type of coach that can really weaponize, in my opinion, uh, Johnny Newton. You saw what they did this past year with Justin Matabuike. I think Johnny Newton is a much better prospect, has an even higher uh, ceiling, more potential than Matabuike. So I think that he has a chance to be an early Pro Bowl caliber player and potentially an all pro interior defensive lineman with his flexibility, his get off, his hand usage. It's all just elite stuff right there. So I think Johnny Newton, a great pass rusher and a very good run defender, despite not being as big. He's just so technically stout, sound and very stout throughout his frame. Uh, and now you have an insane volume of guys in 2024 
on your defensive front, you know, on the interior and on the edges that can rush the passer at a very high level. So I, I really like that. I think you're going to be able to get after the quarterback. I think Johnny Newton's going to help you against the run. Uh, probably going to be your best interior run defender besides Jonathan Hankins uh, to start, you know. Uh, and I do like bringing over Jonathan Hankins to kind of shore up some of that, uh, you know, Draymond Jones and, and Jaron Reed, not the best run defenders. I think that Jonathan Hankins can help out in that regard as well. Big boy coming over from the Dallas Cowboys at 58 overall, the pick that we traded uh, Green Bay Packers. Safety Tyler Newbin is still on the board. And this is a prospect that I view as a late first round guy in this class. I think he's the best safety in this class. He's a playmaker. He's a ball hawk. He's a very good tackler. He has very good size and length. I think he makes a ton of sense for the Seattle Seahawks to come in and, and be a versatile safety. You have Julian Love, you have Rayshon Jenkins, you have Kayvon Wallace that came over from Tennessee, Kobe Bryant. I don't think that he has to start in year one, but I, I don't really believe that Rayshon Jenkins would be able to keep him off the field either. I think that he would be able to come in and earn that job. It doesn't have to be given to him. Uh, you do have other options. Right? But I think that he would earn that job in year one and be, a, again, a ball hawk for the Seattle Seahawks. I would love that and a good run defender to boot. At 81 overall, I mentioned interior offensive line is a big need. You could address it before this, but for me, I, I found more value in those other picks that we made. And uh, at 58, Christian Haynes was off the board. He would be in the same range as a Tyler Newbin for me uh, and a guy that I would love to plug in and start right away for Seattle, but he was off the board, so we went with Tyler Newbin. At 81, interior offensive lineman Mason McCormick still on the board out of uh, South Dakota State. This guy is a mauler. He's ferocious. He plays with an edge. I really like what he does for, for you here, and he's a great athlete. So a lot of experience. I think he can move around the interior offensive line, but I think he could le lock down left guard for you early on. At 118, linebacker Cedric Gray out of North Carolina. I mentioned we want to get some young guys in here at linebacker to develop behind your new starters and, and Jerome Baker and, and Dodson. So uh, Cedric Gray, very good length, very good athlete overall. Uh, I think that he can improve in terms of his block shedding, but a guy that can cover extremely well and also a good tackler in this class. I think that he can come in and develop behind those two guys, be a potential starter for you. At 179 overall, wide receiver Jamari Thrash out of Louisville. This fit is too good, in my opinion. Like this is a guy that in this, in this wide receiver class, there are 25 plus guys that I think can make an impact in the NFL. And, and Jamari Thrash is certainly one of them. He's a great route runner. I think he's a very good athlete. He's got decent size. He's not tiny, so he's not like limited to the slot. I think he could be a move Z slot type receiver, move around the formation, uh, just present targets for, for Geno Smith. Um, and, and a guy, I doubt that he makes it to 179, but I think at 179 here for the, uh, for the Seattle Seahawks, this is the type of range where you could add another receiver that can actually make an impact for you long term. You don't need a receiver, but there's so much value to be had at this point in the receiver class. And uh, even if it's not Jamari Thrash, there's going to be very quality guys available at 179, in my opinion. Uh, at 192, linebacker Kalen Deloach out of Florida State. This is another guy I think, you know, unbelievable speed. He is undersized at linebacker, but he's a good tackler. He's a good run defender. He can fly around the football field. I think he's the type of player Mike McDonald could eventually weaponize in this defense as well. And then at 235, DeAndre Prince out of Ole Miss, a very underrated prospect, in my opinion. He has tremendous speed. He's got pretty good size and length overall, uh, a guy that's very physical uh, against the run and in coverage. I think that he's a Baltimore Raven, which is now a Seattle Seahawk type of cornerback that could come in and compete uh, for reps, you know, long term. Obviously, you have Witherspoon and Rick Woolen and, and uh, Michael Jackson, who played well for you last year, and you have some depth behind those guys. But I, I don't think it's ever a bad move to get more uh, more more players who can cover on the back end and cover and run and play the run as well. So DeAndre Prince, I just think, is a guy who'll come in and, and provide quality depth early on and potentially be a starter long term, depending on how things play out with them. Um, so we get our star interior defensive lineman locked in for the next five years, a cost-controlled contract in Johnny Newton, another star in the secondary in Tyler Newbin. Mason McCormick is Geno Smith's new bodyguard on the interior. I absolutely love that. He's also going to be able to clear the way for Kenneth Walker, Zach Charbonnet and company. Um, a couple linebackers to come in and develop in Cedric Gray and Kalen Deloach out of the ACC. 
couldn't pass on Jamari Thrash at 179. And again, I think there's going to be a receiver there at that point that could make a lot of sense for them to really uh, build a, a receiver core that's just unbelievable. And of course, Tyler Lockett not getting any younger, um, still playing at a very high level though. And then DeAndre Prince, one of the more underrated guys in this class, in my opinion. I would love it. I think this would set them up to kind of you know, they were 9-8 and eight last year, didn't quite make the playoffs. I think this type of draft could put them in a position to to get back into the playoffs. And I think with their new coaching staff, the new direction there, I think that they are going to be a team on the rise in 2024 if they're able to nail this draft class. And I think that they will be able to. They've got a lot of options. Love the trade down. But even if you sit at, and sit and pick at 16, I think Johnny Newton would be a fantastic addition to this football team. If you're a Seattle Seahawks fan, please let me know what you think in the comment section below. If you enjoy the content, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Y'all have a good one.